Hello and welcome to this video on how to make the reference to a table column absolute. Now this is something that has come up a couple of times recently for me in my training sessions and also at a presentation I actually attended and was delivered by somebody else. And this question arose. So let's look at exactly what I mean. I have this data on screen with some subjects and some grades by different individuals and nice and quick, that data is formatted as a table and we want to find the average score. So in cell F3, I can simply use this average function, select the maths column from the table making sure I select the table column and not the sheet column. And it says grades maths, the name of the table followed by the table's column name. I simply close the bracket and run that. And then I can fill it across to the right and everything is brilliant. If I look at the English average score of 84, we can see the formula it says grades table English column. And that is exactly what we want, but it does surprise people when you have what looks like a specific absolute reference to a column name, and then when you fill the formula, it changes. And a lot of people do not expect that and maybe don't want that. Let's move on to one such example. I now have this data about some members of staff and the department they work in. And I want to use an XLOOKUP function to retrieve data from the table on the left into my table on the right. I want to return the name and the department of the IDs mentioned in column E. So in cell F2, if I type my XLOOKUP function, the lookup value is the ID and I will press the F4 key of my keyboard three times to make the column absolute and the row relative so that when I fill my X lookup into column G that doesn't change. Comma brings me to the lookup array that is the ID column. Comma the return array is the name for column F here and I'll close bracket and won't worry about anything else related to X lookup. If I press enter, this will work wonderfully and I can run that down to the bottom. But here comes the problem. I fill that to the right and I receive errors. If we look at the formula in G2, we can see that the lookup array has moved from the ID column to the name column. And then for the return array, it's moved to department, which is actually what we want. So the problem is with that second argument, that lookup array, we need it to be absolute so that when we fill this formula to potentially many columns, it doesn't change. Now, just before I do that, Something quite interesting is that if I was to copy that formula on the end one more column to the right and look at it now, the return array is now the ID. It's got to the end of the table and it just goes to the first column and starts again. Not sure if that's ever useful, but it's interesting. Now let's fix what we have. If I delete these errors, back to the first formula. And to make that table column absolute, we need to add the range operator and an extra set of square brackets. So I'm going to add a square bracket just before the first one after the table name. Then I'll add the colon, the range operator, and simply type the column name a second time followed by two closing square brackets. That will keep it in place. If I press enter and run that down, 
and then fill it to the right. It now works brilliantly for the department column. You can see the lookup array has been fixed onto the ID column, but the return array happily moved to the department column exactly what we wanted. One more thing I want to look at is that in this example, our output area is a range. So the reference we made to cell E2 is an absolute cell reference. But what if that output area was a table and we needed to fix the reference to that cell? So let's have a look at that. If I begin by deleting the values in the department column and then quickly make this a table with control T, confirm that message and I'll just quickly get rid of the styles and I won't worry about changing the table name or anything like that. Let's just get on with it. If I come into cell F2, this is our X lookup. And I do have a cell reference there, which is working fine. But if I select that and click the cell now, we're going to get this table reference to that cell. Now, how do we stop that moving when we fill this formula across? Now it's a similar approach. We can see we have the at symbol indicating this row and we need a square bracket before it and also a square bracket after it. And then we build our range just like the previous example. The colon, open square bracket, ID, closing square bracket, one and then two. And that is what we need to do. Similar to the previous example, just make sure we have that square bracket before and after the at symbol. Now we do need a table reference here, but if I leave it as that and confirm by pressing enter, you can see in the formula bar, they have added the table reference for me, which is table five because I didn't worry about naming it myself. To prove this working, we select those cells, fill it across, and the department comes across fine. And you can see in the formula, both the ID cell reference and the ID column reference to the staff table are both made absolute. And we could fill this to many columns, no problem. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to be notified about the latest Excel videos at this channel. Thank you for watching and take care.